In this video, we'll talk about sodium potassium ATPase. So sodium potassium ATPase maintains the electrochemical gradient of sodium and potassium ions across the membrane. It is useful for maintaining cell volume, nerve impulse transmission, muscle contraction, and many more aspects of cellular physiology. So the structure of sodium potassium ATPase includes two subunits, alpha subunit, which has the binding site for sodium and potassium ions and ATP as well. And the beta subunit stabilizes the pump and within the cell membrane. So here we can see that three sodium and two potassium can bind to this pump. Three sodium is pumped out, two potassium is pumped into the cell. And this pumping of sodium and potassium happens against the concentration gradient with the help of ATP hydrolysis. So the phosphorylation that happens into the pump from the ATP is used as a driving force to pump these ions against the concentration gradient. So sodium is transported uh, from the cytosol to the extracellular space where the concentration is high and potassium is transported from the extracellular space to the cytosol. Now let us try to understand this mechanism but before that we will tell you that Jean uh, Christian Sku got the Nobel Prize for the discovery of sodium potassium ATPase in the year 1997 in chemistry. So let's see how sodium potassium ATPase work. Here all the green uh, ions actually is a sodium ion and the red ones are depicting the potassium ion. So first step is the three sodium ions binds to the cytosolic portion of the pump. Then ATP is hydrolyzed and that phosphorylates the sodium potassium ATPase. After that, there is a conformation shift. So this conformation shift releases sodium onto the extracellular, surf, extracellular side. On the other hand side, potassium binds from the other side and two potassium ion can bind to the extracellular side of the pump. This binding of potassium releases the phosphate group and that triggers another conformational change. Now this conformational change releases the potassium ion inside the cytoplasm of the cell. So if the sodium and potassium pump is active, it would maintain a high concentration of sodium outside and a low concentration of sodium inside. Whereas it would maintain a high concentration of potassium inside and low concentration outside. This is the operation regime of sodium potassium ATPase. And basically this kind of mechanism is super important to, mem to maintain the resting membrane potential of a neuron. We always study that resting membrane potential of the neuron is minus 70 millivolt. Have you ever wondered why it is negative 70? One of the reason by which it is negative 70 and held at negative 70 is because of the sodium potassium ATPase because it pumps three sodium out and two potassium in. So there is a charge deficiency that is happening inside and that is making, making the inside of the membrane more negative as well as uh, there are pota leak potassium channels which are, keep, which are actually uh, pumping potassium out. All these things together make the membrane extremely negative. Anyway, there are other functions of sodium potassium ATPase. Just like man uh, maintaining the resting membrane potential, it helps in muscle contraction, also helps in cell volume regulation. Imagine a scenario that there are too many solutes inside the cell. So if there are too many solutes inside the cell, what would happen that water would come inside the cell, right, for osmosis. But the problem is cell would swell and eventually burst out. So these kind of ATPases make sure that this event doesn't happen and it maintains a gradient against the wheel or against the uh, basically it, it flows the ion against the concentration gradient to maintain a steady uh, state within and without uh, within and outside the cell. So there are clinical importance of sodium potassium ATPase. Several cardiac glycosides such as uh, digoxin can block sodium potassium ATPase. Now that indirectly increases the intracellular calcium concentration and that is important for contractility of the cardiac muscles. This is specially used for heart failure patients. 
Also, there are situations like hyperkalemia and hypokalemia. These, these are imbalances of potassium ion. And basically, these kind of imbalances of potassium ion is super bad for the cardiac muscles. It might lead to cardiac arrhythmia and muscle weakness. So that is why maintaining a healthy balance of sodium and potassium in the blood and in different cells are super important. And sodium potassium ATPs does that job. Many neurological disorders, including epilepsy, where seizures are pretty common, in that case, it has been seen that sodium potassium ATPs fail to perform optimally. And that leads to hyperexcitation of these uh, neurons, which, le which leads to uh, seizures. So that is why clinically, sodium potassium ATPs is an important drug target, and it is super important for function of many cell types and organs in the body. Anyway, let's see how the sodium potassium ATPs can be regulated. It can be regulated under hormonal control. For example, thyroid hormone increases sodium potassium ATPs activity. Insulin stimulates the pump, promoting potassium uptake into the cell. Then there are phosphorylations by several proteins such as protein kinase A, protein kinase C and phosphatases. These can alter basically the overall channel activity. We already looked at how the channel phosphorylation is important. So, any phosphorylase and basically phosphatase enzyme can bidirectionally change the function of these ATPase uh, activity. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Please support our channel using super thanks.